Hello, folks. This is Founder Rune, and I am here with Fantasy Grounds College. I am in the middle of some character building, and I thought I would share this with you guys since I'm just kind of working in the background. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask. I'm not going to do a lot of narration, but if you want to know anything or you want to ask what I'm doing, that's great. Um, this isn't really a formal lesson per se, but I thought I would just share some of my work with you while I work in the background and that I hope that you can follow along or at least understand part of what I'm doing. So anyways, without further ado, um, I'm working on a rogue right now. And this uh, particular character is for a one-shot they're going to run for Founder's Day. I'm working on Marin the Lurker. This is a third-level human variant urchin background rogue. I've already picked the ability scores, the background, the race, and now I'm doing the class. And that's generally the order you want to go in if you're going to use the older drag and drop method. If you're unfamiliar with this and you want it a little bit easier, if you go to the character panel here and under character selection, you can pick the character wizard and that will give you a uh, more uh, easier way to kind of interface with Fantasy Grounds. But there's still a few little things that need to be worked out. But for the most part, you, it, it's good for at least for first level characters. So that's if you click on this character wizard. And you could start building this way. I'm doing the older method. That's because I'm a lot more familiar with it. And also I want a little bit more control over my choices and such. So that's that's why I'm doing it this way. So I'm doing Marin the Lurker. So he's kind of a, uh, I guess, kind of a low life, I guess, is what he's construed to be. He's actually pretty smart. And he grew up on the street. So he's pretty street smart. And he knows how to read people and such. So he's going to be along for this quest for this one shot it takes place in the desert so not a very uh good place for a rogue to go because it's not a lot of hiding places it's not you know he's really not used to the outdoors he's more of an urban type but he does have a lot of skill so he might be able to lend some of his talents to the adventure but for the most part he is just kind of tagging along for the money i think uh, this is more what it's about um so his motivation is definitely financial. Um, I don't know if he's necessarily good or evil. I think he's going to be like neutral, and he's just basically a, a, a human rogue. But he's you know he's going to lend some of his abilities to this crew. He's got like deception, sleight of hand, stealth, and we'll see what his class abilities give him. Probably give him acrobatics and probably perception or something like that. We'll see what happens. So. I'm going to go over to the classes banner on the right hand side. I'm going to pick Rogue. And if you've never used Fantasy Grounds before, but you have a lot of content, it will display like the Sword Coast, Player's Handbook, Tasha's, Xanathar's, you know, all the books that basically I have loaded in the library. It has an entry for the specific classes more than one time. I don't think that can ever be dealt with, you know, as far as Fantasy Grounds goes, but if you're confused by that you can always come up here to the group and just select player's handbook and that narrows this down so you don't get confused and it'll still pull from the other sources so if you're you know if you're getting options paralysis you can always sort the group and just sort it to the book that you want to see i think they're all the same they just pull on different sources but it's okay to do one or the other because it's going to pull through all of them i just do this for a little bit more clarity so I go ahead and drag and drop the rogue into this class and level. And immediately it wants me to pick something to use for the actual class. So these are your class skills. I already got a couple uh, skills from my urchin background and my human variant background. Now I have to pick my rogue abilities. So what I'm looking at is for these skills, I want to check out acrobatics. That was one of them that I wanted to pick for sure. I wanted perception, because that's something I think I'll use a lot. Um, this person, can he can read people pretty good, so probably insight to give him more, because he's a good liar, so he probably knows a lie when he sees one. And then the other thing might be, like, he's already got stealth, so I don't need to worry about that. Maybe athletics, intimidation could be another one so that he doesn't have to fight. He can try to scare somebody. Or maybe performance. Maybe he tries to pretend he's somebody he's not. Um, 
I think persuasion. So you talk his way out of things. Let me look at his, uh, yeah, see, his charisma is not that great. So persuasion would actually help because that will add his proficiency bonus. So that'll give him a 12 instead of a 10. Or we can go with his strengths. And, you know, the acrobatics insight is wisdom. Now, his pro-wisdom isn't all that great either. So if you take a look at um, his wisdom bonus is, is really low. I mean, it's got to be, yeah, it's eight. It's as low as dump stat. So that would kind of offset it, to be honest. So I might just do that. I might offset some of his really weak uh, ability scores. So acrobatics is going to play against his uh, decks, which is great. Insight and perception and all those are off of wisdom. So by picking those, it offsets that. So I'm not uh, don't have shitty rolls. There we go. So you can use those to offset your rolls. And that will help you so that, you know, when you're getting into the playing, you're not going to have problems as much with, with those sort of things. So there's ways that you can offset your dump stats by using skills appropriately. And since you get four of them, plus he's already got three others, that's a pretty good deal. So if you guys uh, have any questions, let me know. I'm building a rogue, and it just happens to be part of a build that I'm creating for my one shot that I'm running yeah, Founders Day on Friday night. I got, I think I have one more spot open. So if you guys are interested, but so far we have Katakatanya, which is a, uh, he's like a, I guess like a, almost like a samurai type warrior, but he's a, you know, a feline tiger looking tabaxi. And he has a really low voice. It's smooth. And he talks like the, uh, like in uh, Skyrim, the Khajiit. He's got that kind of voice. I guess I'm kind of inspired by that and by, by a, kind of like a samurai almost. He's got even a blade that looks like a samurai. And then uh, then we got Rokoman, which is a um, Earth Ganassi monk. And he's like a martial artist guy. Um, basically, he's got a three-section staff. It has different names, but it's like a bow staff. But it's uh, basically a three-section staff. Uh, that he uses for his dedicated weapon, and then he has darts that he throws. So he's uh, got a lot of different things that you know that could help. But he's got this merge with stone, and he's got this Ganassi earth walk, and his path of the Kensei gives him extra bonus attack. And he's got this connection to his weapon, and he can parry, do all kinds of cool stuff. So this is stuff that uh, comes with the monk. And a lot of these um, individuals don't have a lot of armor. The exception is uh, Agrin Anvil Breaker. She's a third level cleric. She's a dwarf. Not wearing a big he heavy set of chainmail or anything, but she does have a chain shirt. And, you know, for just that, she's got a shield, a chain shirt, and I think a plus one on her dex bonus. So that's not bad for, you know, not having very much dexterity and such. So she gets three from the shirt, two from the shield. One from her dexterity, so that's not too bad. So everyone's traveling kind of light because of the conditions, because it's a desert. So you're, they're either not wearing armor or they're wearing leather. And in this case, um, um, Agrin is wearing leather with a chain shirt over it. So she's, you know, she's got like a covering for her upper set. So she has short legs; she can get away with that. Um, but that's basically the, the the builds that that I'm going with on this. Um, and then the other character is um, Zora Sahar. And the word Sahar is a word for magic. But she's uh, basically a sorceress. And I rolled her up. She's a shadow sorceress. She gets her powers from the Shadowfell. Uh, generally, she... You know, she'll use she relies on her magic. She's not very strong, but she has a very um, forceful personality. She's a little bit crazy and lost. Um, she's had to live with this curse slash, you know, blessing most of her life. Um, she didn't know that she had this birthmark tattoo-like thing on her until she got older. Um, once she figured it out and she started making the connection between her past and her, she's an inheritor. So one of the things she inherited was this 
tattoo, and it, it basically marks her as something important from the past, but she doesn't know what it is. Um, but basically, her powers come from the Shadowfell. She's trying to discover herself, and she wants to figure out where her powers came from and why she feels so like down and cursed and ashamed and that sort of thing. So she's not very keen on showing too many people that she has that tattoo. And she's very, very, very conscious of it. And it's in a place where only certain people would see it. So she's only showed it to a couple people, showed it to one of her relatives, which was a mistake. Um, that's when she had to flee from home. And then she showed by accident, one of her lovers uh, at one point and, uh, she got really upset about it and ended up killing the guy on accident because she freaked out. And then one other time she went to a magician or a really powerful mage and showed him and she paid him a bunch of money to get it removed because she didn't want the curse anymore. And when he tried to remove it, it did a lot of different things. Like when she had it, um, he was she was laying on a table and he was trying to use magic on it. It basically rebuffed him, so when he tried to cast magic on it, it it uh, it either dispelled it or backfired. So he he stopped doing that. Then he tried like a ritual to get rid of it, and it made her really sick, and she almost died. So then his one last thing was to just cut it out physically, and when he tried to do that, it uh, it uh, came back. So it, it it just she's had this problem since she was little probably around six or seven when she discovered it she's lived shamefully with this with this tattoo and she doesn't really quite understand what it means but it caused her grief she had to run away from home and then she like i said her lover found it and he asked her about it and she freaked out she actually choked him to death because she was scared that he would tell somebody and so she's not very good um she's kind of got a i made her chaotic neutral but she should actually probably be neutral evil um, it's not because she, you know, wants to go out and murder people. It's just that she's so paranoid about her, her her powers and such. And she tries not to use them, but when she does, it's just incredible. It comes from within her, and she just kind of lets loose. And she has a lot of good firepower, and she also has some utility spells and such. So, and she has a warcaster feat, so it's hard to um, break her concentration. And then she has other things because she has Witch Bolt and Darkness. So those are kind of like concentration like spells. So definitely needs that Warcaster. Uh, but anyway, so that's the, the main character so far. So we got um, Agrin Anvilbreaker, a third level cleric. Um, she worships Ayla Brightaxe. And she's kind of a warrior domain, kind of a war domain. Zora is a shadow sorceress. Rokuman is a Kensei monk, and Katakatan is a, I think he's a champion build fighter, and he has kind of like a focused weapon, and he's more of an adventurer, kind of curious, likes to go along for the ride, and he likes the action. He's more in for the thrill and for the knowledge as opposed to gold, and he has no problem with um, helping people and such. He's pretty nice. Nice. Uh, ally to have uh, he's very defensive but he i mean fighting style wise but he you know he's not a weak by any means yeah so he's a champion so he has improved critical um damage when he uses his blade he's using like a katana type blade um yeah he has a katana and uh he can use it you know with uh one or two hands so if he switches over to two-handed he can. He doesn't use a shield, so I think in most cases he would use two-handed. And I went ahead and set that in the uh, in Fantasy Grounds. A short bow is also a two-handed weapon, so make sure you set those if you have a weapon. And if you're unsure, look it up in the properties of the weapon. It'll tell you if it's two-handed or not, so the short bow definitely is. And if you want to use a katana for more damage, you have to use two hands. And it'll automatically change that if it's set up correctly. So that is basically the the lowdown or the breakdown of the characters I've made so far. So I'm working on the rogue, and it's Marin the Lurker. She's, or he, we haven't decided yet. 
um, is someone that is uh, probably a male. Uh, we haven't decided if he's uh, you know, good or evil yet, but definitely not not great. You know, probably chaotic good at best, but I don't think he's good. Probably another weird, strange, chaotic, neutral type. But anyhow, so he's at first level, and I already picked the rogue, so I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this again, which gives him his other skills. So all I did was drag this little question mark or this exclamation mark, this little square, my hands sitting on there underneath that green plus button. I'm just going to drag this back in there again. And now I come to third level, which is the level that gets his archetype. So I have to pick what type of rogue he wants to be. So there is a mastermind. They focus on people, on the influence and secrets they may have. They usually spies and careers. So I'm not definitely not going to do that. Swashbuckler, eh, I don't see him being like that necessarily. Arcane Trickster, nah, sounds good. So either the assassin, the thief, the inquisitive mind is... So rooting out secrets and unraveling mysteries, that might be something. An ear for deceit. Yeah, he he's uh, definitely something like that. So he's going to be one of these. A soul knife is kind of a, you know, one of those psionic types. I'm not I'm not sure about that. A scout is someone who is going to uh, stealth and survive in the streets. Might do that actually. Scout might be good. Mastermind. We already kind of looked at that. So I think Thief or, in this case, I think I'm going to go with the Scout. So Thief is basically like a burglar. They want to delve into ancient ruins. Actually, Thief would be perfect, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the Thief background, or the archetype. And that's third level. So at third level, if you're using experience, that's 2,700 points for their next level, and 900 for the level of level 3. So I went ahead and changed that in the, it's not that critical. It's just a manual process. I just wanted to have it for completedness. Okay, so that's basically, that's the basics of it. So we did the ability scores, background, race, class. Now I'm going to look at the skills. They're all set in there right now. I'm going to add thieves tools because I know that's one of the ones he gets. And that's going to make sure that's proficient and that it's based on dexterity. And I have to also make sure he has this, the, the items, too, in the inventory. That helps. Yeah, so he has Thieves Tools, so I'm going to put that in the pouch. And then there's a, uh, a long rope. I'm going to put that in the backpack. And the backpack right now is says it's empty, so I'm going to erase empty because I, I want to store things in there. And I have a quiver, so I'm going to type quiver next to the arrows because I want to store those there. I have a bunch of ball bearings, so I want to put that in a pouch. There's a little bell, which I'll put in the backpack to kind of try to stifle some of the sound. Candles are going to go in there. Common clothes, so that's probably worn. Crowbar is, let's see. Uh, I guess I'll go with
So try to make these characters as thorough as possible. So what I was doing is basically customizing the the uh, basically the actions tab and adding things so that this character would be a much easier um, use. So the dialogue that I have here is not very much, but if you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask. So I'm building a rogue right now at level three, um, human variant, urchin background. Uh, they have a rapier, a short bow, which is a two-handed weapon, so I had to change that to two hands. And then you have a dagger that you can either stab with or you can throw. You've got two of them. And then the standard actions, any items that have any codable function, and then, of course, the rogue abilities. And some of this is role play stuff. So, like, second story work, I mean, it doesn't do anything mechanically. But when you have them on the combat tracker and you enable that effect, it basically gives a note here. So, when they're playing, it's kind of already there, kind of like a reminder. So, that's a kind of a cool thing. And same thing with this steady aim. If they were to use this as a bonus action, which they can. Um, and it's on self and it expires. You can give yourself advantage on your next attack on the current turn. You can only use this if you haven't moved. And after you use the bonus action, your speed is zero until the end of the turn. So you can kind of set yourself to, to kind of give a steady aim. It's almost like a sneak attack type thing, but it's more advantage on the attack roll. And sneak attack itself is... You know, you have to kind of set that up, but I went ahead and changed that to 2d6 because of the level that this the rogue is at. You go to the actual sneak attack, it says that, you know, at first level, what you get, and then it says the damage increases as you gain levels, as shown on the sneak attack column of the rogue table. So I don't know why I don't just add the table here. It makes no sense. But anyways, if you go to the rogue class... And you actually look at the table there that that's given. Uh, if you scroll down in the class description, it tells you in their uh, uh, progression on their levels of what they get. So here's the table. So at third level, they're plus two in their proficiency bonus. They're 2d6 in their sneak attack damage. And they get their archetype at that level. So they already have cunning action and they have expertise, sneak attack, and thieves can't. So I need to add um, expertise to the skill. So I need to pick two skills. I can do Thieves and one of the others, or I can pick something else. So I think I'm going to do Stealth for sure. And probably, I don't know if I want these tools. Probably Perception. Those are probably the most commonly used ones. So that's my expertise in those particular skills. So I took care of that. So these are like little things that you have to do to round your character out. Otherwise, you're going to forget and you won't even take advantage of everything that you you are offered when you're playing. So that's pretty much it. I mean, I got all this stuff. Um, this is a human variant, so I get to pick a feat. So I haven't done that yet. So I'll go to feats. And I'm going to go ahead and go down through this. And maybe I will get something that's going to help him. Definitely want to let's see. Lucky linguist, lightly armored. So you have trained to master the use of light armor, gaining the following benefits. You gain proficiency with light armor, which he already has. Increase your strength or dex by one. And it's not worth it. Mobile might be good. So your speed increases by 10 when you use a dash action. Difficult terrain doesn't cost you extra movement. When you make a melee attack against a creature, you don't provoke opportunity. I, you know what? I like that. So this individual is going to get that feat for this particular character. And you put that in your skills, skills tab or your uh, abilities tab. You scroll up there's on the very top. So I'm going to drag and drop this up here. And then what you want to do is you take a look at your movement. See, the movement was already adjusted. It added the extra 10 feet because of the mobile feet. So that is good. And then the other things are role play. So um, here's the feature. And this is more of a note. So if I'm playing this character, 
and I want to make sure the DM and I remember what's going on. In the combat action mode, I can turn the feet on, and all it does is it adds the extra notation. And that way, when you're playing, it's a lot easier to, to use the character, and you don't have to look things up as much. And then for the details, it tells you right here what it does, so that's great. So that's more of a racial feat type thing. At least that's what they got from their race type. So that's kind of cool. I like that. He ended up getting something kind of cool out of the feats for being a human variant. Um, Zora did too, because she's a human variant as well. But um, that's for Adventures League. We have our notes here. So let's uh, do the alignment. I think I'm going to start them off as neutral. Doesn't really have a deity or anything. Male. Say he's about 24. He's about 5'10 in height. He's not very tall, but he's certainly wiry. And he probably weighs about 126 pounds soaking wet. Not very, very big. And I'm going to go ahead and go to his background and take a look at the urchin traits. It's important to have a short story. And I think what, you know, during a campaign, you can develop your backstory as you go, kind of. Start off with some notes and, and go from there. But when you're actually playing, um, it, it makes a difference, you know, so you can kind of play into what, what you want. But in a one shot, it's kind of nice to define some of that. So the person who's picking that player up has an idea of how they might play them. It's just a guideline. It's not really required, but it's good to know what the backstory is for the players is what I'm getting at. So the urchin background, if I go down to the bottom here, there's city secret. So I have a map of the city I'm from and also the best uh, overland travel between two locations in the city so that you know so you know what you're doing but you're really not going to help much in this adventure but it's there so let's see what the personality brings us so i'm going to go to the notes area and i'm going to roll the dice see what we get so i sleep with my back to the wall with everything i own wrapped in a bundle in my arms that's pretty much him he's uh kind of paranoid you can get two personality traits so let's roll another one and see what it says I ask a lot of questions. I don't see him doing that, so I'm going to re-roll. And the last one is, everyone who's nice to me is hiding evil intent. You know, that's very, very paranoid, but I don't think it fits him. But it's it, it close, though. Um, so now I'm going to go to the ideals and roll that and see what it is. Respect. All people, rich or poor, deserve respect. Yeah, I don't see that. Community change the low are lifted up and the high and mighty are brought down change is the nature of things there's retribution there's people and aspiration i'm going to prove that i'm worthy of a better life that's that's him sure i can see that and then the bonds my town or city is my home and i'll fight to defend it that's definitely um something that this individual is into and then I owe, I say, a sponsor an orphanage. I owe a debt, and I can never repay the person who took pity on me. That would probably be it. Probably the guild took him in. Or no one else should have to endure the hardships that I've been through. I'm going to add that, too. You're not limited, so you can add and take away what you want. And I'm going to take away the town thing, because I think that's a little bit too loyal even though they spend most of their time there. So that's good. So they have those, and then there's a flaw that's associated with the background. Let's see what they what the dice decides. People who can't take care of themselves get what they deserve. Perfect. And that's how he feels like. They can't handle it. Too, too bad. So that's kind of how he is with how he wants to handle people. So he gets a disguise kit and thieves tools. So in the inventory, I want to make sure that I add those. So I'm going to go to items, and I'm going to look for tools. So Thieves Tools is down here on the bottom. Like I said, those there's two sets of them, so he doesn't... 
doesn't have to worry too much about it, but there's the thieves tools. They're in the pouch. There's got to be another one. I grabbed the wrong one. Tinkers tools. That's not the right. I want thieves tools. There we go. So I want to make sure that's in the pouch. He's got two sets of thieves tools in case he, in case they get broken. Thieves tools. Thieves tools. So I'll just change this to two and then get rid of this extra one. There we go. We don't want too much weight. Whoever is got arrows in it. Okay, so we got an extra thieves tools, and I don't remember what the other thing was, but um, it was definitely something like a let's see inventory. Yeah, so they get thieves tools disguise kit. That's what it was. So disguise kit in case they want to try to fool someone. There's the clothing for the disguise kit. And then there is the kit itself. So I'm going to put that in the backpack and it's the same with the other. So there's a disguise kit and a and clothing. There we go. So then I'm going to go ahead and add disguise kit to the skills so that if they want to roll using their disguise, um, that would be a lot more handier than trying to just wing it. So I went ahead and made it proficient, and it's going to be based on charisma, of course. And it's you know, not so bad. It's a plus two, so, you know, not as strength, but, you know, in using these costumes and makeup and such, you could probably make himself look all right. So that's uh, basically the, the gist of it. I don't think there's too much more. I mean, Thieves Can't is a language. We can actually add that to the uh, to the language pool. So if I go to Languages down at the um, where the Skills tab is, or excuse me, the Abilities, um, I can add that here. And it says Choice, and then I'm going to add this Thieves Can't. And the choice that he chose is going to be Elven or Elvish. So he can speak Elvish other than common. A Thieves Cant is not a normal language, but if you go, if you're the game master, you can go into the options menu. And if you want to add this under languages, you can. So if I go to the languages area and I click add item, I can add the thieves tools to the language pool. And even the like druids cant isn't in here. So if you want it, might as well just add that just in case to your campaign. So click the green plus button and add Druids Cant so that it will be available in your game if you need it. So anytime you need a language, just bring it in here. You're limited on these, uh, you know, the font. So if for Druids Cant, I'm going to pick like Sylvan or something. Where's that? Druids Cant, I'm going to pick... Elven, I think, is closest thing to it. Yeah. So that's that. So that's in case you want to add it. What that does is in the chat area, there's a drop down. And now Druids Cant and Thieves Cant will show up in the list of options. So that's something that uh, more of a tip for game masters because players can't really add those uh, unless they ask and the GM puts it in. So that's the gist of that. So we have the cunning action is basically just a, a feature and we can actually add that as a note and I'm going to double check and make sure that's not already been done. So I have Rob Tui's coding effects. So I'm going to go to class features and I'm going to make sure that I don't have cunning action as, as already. Yeah. So it's not really a, a codable action. It's more of a note, but you can do disengage, hide and dash. So let me go to there. So here's all the, the syntax already for action, so I'll just add um, disengage, and that will just be a note basically. Disengage. So when they want to use their cunning action, they can. And then it's and that's just a note. Like I said, it doesn't really do anything. It just gives them the ability to mark that as being disengaged. So what I will do is go to the library. 
And I want to make sure I have the rule. So, I mean, you don't have to do this, but it's handy for you and your player. So if we go to the player's handbook and we go to the reference manual, which is the actual book, and let's type in disengage and see what we get. Uh, actions and combat. So there's the attack option. There's dash disengage. So let's uh, let's take a look at that. So it says if you take this action, your movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks for the rest of the turn. So that's good. So that uh, and it's a bonus action on top of that. So we'll put a little B right there so that the player knows that it's an actual bonus action. It just allows you to act quicker. And then you have, uh, it's part of the disengage action and cunning action. So, yep. So that's basically just a way to avoid um, getting the opportunity attacks, which is nice. So it's nice to have the rules right there. So instead of having to look them up all the time, you can make them as notations in your actions that you're setting up for your players. So to create an action, all you have to do is go to the edit list, and then you click on the little blue star, and it adds a new category, which is called powers by default. And then on the right-hand side, you call this whatever you want, supplies, special abilities, whatever you want to call it. So if I add this as, let's say, um, I'll use it for magic items. Well, I don't have any, but I want to show you the... So we're going to set up the category by typing the phrase magic items. And then once I click over to the left, this will update and it will go in alphabetical order. So now it's jumped down here to magic items. I don't have any right now, but that's a section or a group where I would put extra abilities or stuff that's not covered in, in the actual game and put them in the description here. So it depends on what the item does. I'm not talking like a weapon or armor. I'm talking like a wondrous item or a spell scroll or something like that. That's where I'd put that. And then I get out of the edit mode. So now I have a new group called magic items. There's nothing in there yet. This is a placeholder. And if I did get something, I can throw it in there. So if I, you know, grabbed a figurine of wondrous, you know, ability or whatever, I'd have to throw, drop the item in inventory and then I'd bring it and title this and put all the syntax and the information. And then if it had any coding, I would right-click and add an action to it if it wasn't already taken care of. So that's just a little tip so that if you want to customize your character. Right now, he doesn't really have any magic items, but I am thinking about giving him a potion. So let me put that in there. Just So that's just a, um, go to uncat or all. So yeah, you can there's a healing potion, so I'm going to drag and drop that in there. And that actually adds the potion. And then I can take away the the uh placeholder and then this says self on it. I want to change that to targets. It does 2d4 healing. So now he has a potion uh that functions in the actual actions area and in the items area, I need to make sure I put that item in there too for weight. So if I go to healing, and go to potion of healing, and just drag and drop it in here, and then I'm going to put the, let's see, yeah, it's unidentified, that's why it said that. Okay, now it's identified, and I want to put that in their um, pouch. So now it's in the pouch. So there we go. So that's basically how you would add an extra function feature area, and then you would fill it with whatever content you need. So in this case, we even had a separate area for potions. Could have put it in one area with a, see now I got two groups though, potion of healing, and then I got this other potion of healing. So let me get rid of that because it already set up the action, but I wanted to show you how to do it. So I'll just get rid of one of these groups. There we go. So there's your item. So that helps uh, when you're customizing your characters. So that takes care of this rogue. I mean, they got everything. They got cunning action. I'm going to put the, uh, under the thief stuff, I'm going to put the cunning action description in there. I'm not going to worry about 
coding because it's just notes. So if I go to the abilities tab and I bring up this cutting action again, I'm going to drag and drop it down here into this area. And see, it tries to set up its own group. So I'm just going to copy and paste the word rogue and put it in the same group. Now the cunning action is in there. We know most of those are bonus actions, and it's just a description. So we don't have to worry about you know doing any coding or anything. It's just a, basically a note. And that makes the character sheet a lot more thorough, so you're not constantly looking things up. So that's basically how that works. And then I'm going to change this to action. So that's what your sheet should look like. So this is just a kind of a, a way to illustrate that. So the, the next character, I'm going to build one more character. So we have a healer. We have a warrior. We have a monk. We have a sorceress. And then we have uh, a thief or a rogue. So we got five players. So I'm going to have to make one or two more. So I was thinking about a tinker or gnome. What do you guys think about that? A, a tinker... Uh, we can also use another barbarian or a ranger type, and then we could always use a uh, bard would be a good one for utility. And then, of course, you can never have too many spellcasters, so we could use a full-on wizard or even a warlock, but we kind of have a sorceress, so it kind of eh, it may not be needed, but if, if anything, probably a wizard type. Or we could have a combination like a blade, run, a singer, or something or like a not a trickster rogue because we have a full rogue and then we have you know if i was going to do a rogue of any sort probably be a, a bard or something like that but not, anyways i'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to mull it over uh let me know what you think i should build because i got five characters i need one more and it's just D D 5e rule set so if you can uh, suggest a build for me it would be third level there will be a um you know, a choice between a, a warrior type, a rogue type, or a spellcaster type. Or I was thinking about going with one of the, uh, you know, like the new archetypes, like the Tinkerer. I thought that'd be kind of cool. Like an explorer, um, somebody that dinks around, that likes to check things out. Almost like a, a little miniature Indiana Jones or something like that. Somebody that has the archaeologist kind of, uh, you know, gadgets. They use a whip, you know, kind of like Indiana Jones, I guess, is kind of the vision I had. But anyways, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to take a quick break, and uh, I will be back shortly. Just give me a moment. All right, so my heart is set on a tinkerer. I think that'll round out the classes very well. Um, give us some auxiliary things, some assistance, utility, basically. So I'm going to try to build it live with the uh, character builder. So I'm going to go to characters. And I'm going to click on the character wizard. 
And this allows you to build a character without committing to anything. Because if you do the drag and drop, you're pretty much stuck once you pick something. So it's asking me to pick a race. And that's this first button up here. So I definitely want a gnome because they're really set well for being a tinkerer. You can be a different race, but I think gnomes and goblins make a good, uh, good match for that. So where's the gnome at? You have a gnome. Yep. So when you click the gnome, it gives you the base here, and now it wants a sub race. So definitely want like a rock gnome. Yeah, this is a, a good batch for what I'm looking for. So sub race, rock gnome. Yep. So double click and you got the rock gnome. So that satisfies the race. Now we want to look at the stats. So that's the, the, the breakdown of the stats so far. Um, probably see this guy be very, very tough at all. So I don't know. I might, I might change that up. But if you want to do a dice roll, you can. This is based off the standard array of 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8. So if I do a dice roll, that resets it, but then it puts in all the stats again. So you can do this a few times to get kind of used to re-rolling. So here's another re-roll. So you can just roll if you want till you get something nice or, you know, or if you don't want to roll, you can do your point buy system and your total point buy usually is 27. So Let's see if this works. So there's one spent. So you spend points basically as you level up. So get this little turkey up to a certain point. Let's see what happens. I want a little bit more intelligence and wisdom. The other guy had. So I still have 20 points left, which is good. And then you have your racial adjustments already in there. So I'm going to go up to there and up to there and go up to here and see what that gives me. So I've used 24, got a few more points, so probably gonna put it on decks. That's the last thing I believe. Uh, no, that's that's not what I want. So I can't put any more on decks, so I don't have enough points. So probably con be my next best thing here. And then 13 con, 13 intelligence, maybe 12 wisdom. There we go. So that is basically uh, the way you can do a point by. You can roll or you can manually change them. So it's up to you. But then once you're done, now you're going to click on the class. And this is going to be an artificer type. And now it wants to know what proficiencies you want. So I want sleight of hand. It's a single click. And then arcana. So those are my the two go-tos that I want. And if you're going to do a multi-class, you'd pick that at this point. I'm going to do that. And now uh, background. So the background is probably going to be like a crafter or something, maybe a hermit. That kind of tinkers on their own. City, cloistered scholar, courtier, inheritor, far traveler, faction agent, and clan crafter. I don't think so. I'm going to go with guild artisan. That's what I want. And then you get to pick a tool. So this person is, or this tinkerer is going to get tinkers tools. And then the languages, you get one extra language besides Gnomish. Is, in common, is probably going to be, 
probably let's see who else likes to tinker. I don't know. Maybe a, a more exotic race. Maybe um, let's go with Sylvan. That might be a thing. So we've satisfied all four of those things. That's what this is looking for. And then for inventory, this is kind of confusing, but just follow along. So um, you get different things depending on what your character would normally get. So you get a choice of one of these items here. So I think I'm just going to go with a... Uh, This is a class choice here, so probably something weird. Probably a quarterstaff or a club. See him with a with a knife for sure. What about a whip? Have those in here. So light crossbow, throwing dagger. Throwing dagger sounds kind of cool. Maybe a little javelin or a spear. Eh. I think he's gonna have a just like a dagger or some kind of missile weapon. Maybe a light crossbow. That's pretty simple. Okay, so you got that. And now for choice of armor, we're going to pick studded leather. And as you're doing this, you want to go to purchase equipment and do this as you're going. Don't, don't wait till the very end because then you're going to have to figure out what you try to pick and everything. So it's better to go back and forth between your choices. So for gear, I'm going to wait. I'm going to go with the weapons first. We said light crossbow, so let's try that. And then you search by the item type. So I double search there. Here's a light crossbow. You drag and drop that into your inventory. And then for armor... We said um, studded. And that's why you don't want to go too far into this without buying the content. Because it gets kind of, it can be a little cumbersome if you're trying to go back and remember everything. And then for gear, we definitely want a case and then the bolts themselves. So here's the bolt case. So we'll drag and drop that down into the inventory. And then we want the tools, which is the Tinker's tools. Down here, drop that. And we had the actual bolts. So here's the crossbow bolts. So you do that as you're buying all your starting gear. That way you're not, you know, constantly going back and you know, Constantly trying to figure out what's going on. So I already picked my starting gear. I need a pack of some sort. So Dungeoneer's pack, probably. I'll have to look. So let's look at inventory. Let's see. I'm going to go to purchase equipment. And I want to go to gear. And I'm going to add... The search term for pack, artisan's pack actually might be more. Let's see, traveler's pack, there's a supplicant, savages, scholar, sailors, priests. Let's go with the pack. What's in that? It's actually not a bad pack. Um, there's a chef's pack. Let's go with the arcanist pack. What's that got? Tinderbox, scroll case, diagrams, wand, and nah. that's the other one, builder's pack. That's actually closer than here's the crafter's pack. Yeah, I think that's that's what we want. So the crafter's pack is gonna go in here to the uh, inventory. And then uh, once we're done with that. You would have some spells that you need to pick. So they have some cantrips. So you get one, two. And what happens though is, you know, you start doing this and then you get up to level three and you get more. So you got to 
So you don't get any cantrips, but you do get some what level one spells. So definitely want to have, let's see, detect magic is important. It's one of two. And expeditious retreat. That's in case he needs to get the heck out of dodge. And that's the satisfaction for that. And then if you have any level one, you know, when you get to a higher level. So you got a couple cantrips to start with. And then you go to level one. So that is the uh, basically the way that you can use this um, character builder. And then when you're done, if you don't have any feats or anything, then you can go ahead and, and hit save. And it brings you back to the original character sheet, the character creation. And this is for level one. So we want to level it up to level three. So you can do it the old way, the drag and drop method. Or you can go back to this artificer here and go up to the class and level area. And you click level up and it brings you back to the wizard. I think I'm going to use the old way now. So I, I built it, you know, the, the, the quick way with the character builder for first level. But now I want to go in and start adding more custom things. And I want to make sure that it, I get all the things. So here's some of the stuff that we got already. Yeah, so crossbow, probably a dagger. I mean, it's not going to kill him. So items. And yeah, the crafter's pack didn't didn't explode, so I was worried about that. So I'm going to take that off. I'm going to go to the backgrounds and go to clan crafter. Or no, this was a, not a clan crafter. Guild artisan, excuse me. So he's part of like a creator's guild type thing. So guild artisan pack. And this is in for, for the backgrounds. So I'm going to go to the... Parcels, I have the Rob Tui background and equipment class bundles. I want to make sure we get all that stuff. If it gets doubled up, I can always delete it because I, I want to make sure he gets everything that he comes to him. So we want the clan crafter for our guild artisan, excuse me. So do that, grab that, drop that. So yeah, we already had that, but it didn't have some of these other things, which was interesting. Okay, and we got the gold. Starting gold, so that's good. And then for the uh, actual class itself, don't really have a a good way to select this. So let's um, let's look in the equipment item section and let's see what kind of these are all the kits and stuff like that. Let's go with a uh, pack. Let's see what that does for us. So I definitely wanted that. Fabricator's Pack, or whatever it was. Diplomat, Builder's Pack, Crafter's Pack, there it is. So there, there's an Artisan's Pack. So this is a Guild Artisan, so let's grab the um, Artisan's Pack. Yeah, so that makes sense. So I'm going to go to Inventory, I'm going to grab the Artisan's Pack. And see, it didn't explode out like I'd hoped, but you get a bunch of stuff in it. Uh, so it, you get a chest, protective robe, tinder box. That seems a little much. I'll just go ahead and delete that. That that's unnecessary, especially for a one shot. Let's go with a uh, just a uh, adventurer's backpack or dungeoneer's pack. There we go. That's kind of cool. They got other things in there that we might need. So when you drag that over, that actually explodes open into content. So that way. You have what you need. He's got studded leather armor. That's not bad. Let's see what we got for yeah, 15 AC is not bad for you know just some ar light armor and and their dex bonus. So that's pretty good. Yeah. So the, he's got full advantage on stealth checks. So that's pretty good. And I can change any of this if I want to. So I manually change the strength to 11. And I'm going to leave everything else the same. So you can make little adjustments if you're the game master and you see fit. I don't think that 11 is going to make any difference for anything. But I just wanted to be, let you know and be aware of that possibilities there if you have to. 
So that's basically all of the little doodads and the, the main parts. So to level this character up, I'm going to go to the class and level area. And instead of using a character wizard now, I'm just going to drag and drop this class over here, which is on the right. So if you just drag and drop that, it actually adds. Let's see, it added some more hit points and it added infuse item ability. And I'm going to go ahead and do one more. And now it wants me to pick out which type. Uh, we could do the Battlesmith, but eh, maybe. Steel Defender and Artillerist. Ooh, yeah, Artillerist would be cool. Or maybe an Armor. Maybe. Kind of like just a traditional alchemist where they you know, they use different things to create things. I, I don't know. I'm kind of torn on that. So Artillerist is going to be the one that, that I'm going to pick ultimately. But I thought it was cool that they have different things that may lend themselves to the actual game. So that's that. Um, so you got this Eldritch Cannon, which is kind of cool. You got this little thing that you carry with you. And then you have your actions up here. Got a couple spells. There's a level one spells. Um, these probably come with, well, those were the ones I picked earlier. So I get to pick a few more spells, but let's go ahead and do that while we're here. So if I go to the um, spells banner, and I'm going to pick the Rob 2E coding effects since they're a little bit more detailed. But you can use the, the player's handbook or whatever content you have. And then, uh, let's see, I want to go to level one. And then I'm going to pick the source is going to be a, what is this? An artificer. There we go. And if you look at the artificer, the actual class itself, you will notice that there's a actual chart that gives you a better idea. So when you're building your character, it's handy to have this thing bookmarked and then have it set so you can look at this. So he's level three. So he can know four infusions and two items. Um, and that's what basically what uh, what this gives him. So these little bonus spells here are just part of that. And then you have your cantrip. So you get two cantrips and three known spells at first level. So I get one more. So let me think. So we have alarm, cure wounds, detect magic. We already have detect magic and ability to retreat. I'd say identify ah, grease, actually. I love the grease spell. And then we do, do we have any no th second level slots? Why are they here then? It's a case. Well, it says we get uh, two second level slots. That may may not be right. So, anyways, it says known spells is three total at first level. So this this character is is third level, and it only gets two cantrips and three first level spells. But it's saying that for some reason it's giving us this extra slots here which i'm not sure what's going on with that but this is an artificer and this is the artificer table so if you see something like that make sure you report it but also you can go to your preparation mode and you can get rid of the you can change these numbers up here and that will give you the correct the correct number of spells to use so that's something that might be broken um, or it could be an extension that's doing it. Whatever it is, it's not right. So anyhow, so that's uh, basically how that would work. And then, of course, these are intelligence-based spells. So did I pick right on that? Yeah, 15 intelligence. That's, that's nice. All right, so that's the spells. And some of the gnome abilities are there, the items that they have. The only thing I would probably have to work on are the infusions, and those are just, you know, like items and such. 
So the crossbow, he has 20 bolts, and I remember that I was going to give him some more stuff, like some items. And this was going to be, let's see, we have the case. Do we have the case in here? We should. Yep. So the case is going to hold the, the bolts. So let's put that in the case. Crowbar is going to go in the backpack. Same thing with the hammer. This letter of introduction will go to the pouch. The pythons will go in the pouch. Rations will go in the backpack. Rope will be kind of tied to the backpack. Tinder box will be in the backpack. Tools will be in the backpack. So you're probably going to choke me if I say that one more time. <laughs> in the backpack, in the backpack. So that's uh, basically just organizing and restructuring where the stuff is stored. Um, now I need to come up with a couple things for the actions for infused items and such. So I'm going to go to the Artificer class abilities. And instead of spells, I want to go to class features. And I want to get out of this actual class and that and go back to Artificer for the source. So there's no class features really for the Artificer, which is Oh, yes, there is. I was looking in the wrong place. So Artificer, I don't have any of this. So Battle Ready is for the Battlesmith. Yeah, so there's really not a whole lot that I need to add. Yeah, Arcane Firearm. That's fifth level. So. I got most of the stuff I need. The Eldritch Cannon is basically what I got. Okay, so that's the... Oh, there's a Flamethrower, a Ballista Protector. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So I want to make sure I give him the dagger, though. I forgot that again. So we'll go to the items and grab the daggers that I forgot. Maybe the infused dagger. Here we go. So you can have two infused weapons, so I will definitely or two infused items. So definitely gonna put that in his inventory, the fused one. So you can have one of those, which is cool. It's almost like a magic dagger. Yeah, it's finesse thrown and has a magical property. So he infuses it with his um, tinkering with some kind of magic. So that's going to be a one for ammunition, which is kind of cool. And then what's the other thing? Artillerist spells. You get shield, thunder wave. Yeah, those don't come... Well, that's a third level feature. So, you get Thunder Wave and Shield. So, that is an artillerist thing. So, I'm going to go to Spells. And I want to make sure I go to the Spells area. And uh, this is going to just be... Let's see. So, Shield... That's a free spell. And then Thunder Wave. So that's part of your class features to have those spells at your disposal. So that's pretty cool. So that's that. So you know these spells, you prepare them. They don't count against the number of your spells that you prepare. You still have to count them as casting them. They're not like freebies. And then I have to think of another plus one infused item. So it might be the leather. Let me try that out. Yeah, infused leather armor of fire resistance, maybe? Something like that, or just plus one. I think that'll help. So infused leather armor instead of regular. 
So infuse leather armor plus one. And then I'll get rid of the standard leather. Because then it's lighter and, you know, it's not as heavy as studded. And I'll have the same armor class, so that's cool. So infuse needs to be worn. There we go. So yeah, this armor class didn't change, but it, the the weight and the the amount of temperature and heat that he won't have to deal with is good. So that's a a bonus for him. Yeah. So that this is just um, you know rounding out the character, putting in all the little um, doodads for their levels of their you know certain level they get this and that. So that's what I'm doing now is kind of giving him the stuff that he needs. So then the other ability said Eldritch Cannon. We already dealt with that. Guild membership. Don't worry about that. So infusions. We've already have that. So we're dealing with that right now. Oh, what's nice is uh, when they get higher level, they can do some really cool things. But at lower level, it's just like they're blessing their items, so to speak. Cool. So he knows two infusions, spell casting, the right tool for the right job. So you learn how to produce exactly the tool you need. With thieves tools or artisan tools in hand, you can magically create one set of tools. So yeah, that's that's nice. So you don't have to have a whole bunch of different uh, toolkits. So we already have the tinkers toolkits. We already have the artisan's tools, medium or light armor, simple weapons, thieves' tools. That's something I forgot to give him. So he gets thieves' tools, and he's proficient with them. So let's put that there. And this will go in his backpack, or actually in the pouch. Be ready for him. Oops, wrong thing. I put ouch instead of pouch. So there's the pouch, and that's where the thieves' tools will reside. And then I'm going to go up to the skills area, add this artisan tools. For crafting purposes. And for the class abilities. And that will be a kind of a intelligence based thing, I guess. And then the of course the thieves tools will not this will be dex based. So he's got some little tinkering tools he can use, like you know, you can pick locks and stuff too. So that helps. If, especially if you don't have a rogue, it's nice to have that. So there we go. So that's that. What else does he have or she haven't decided yet. Uh, probably a him because we got a couple females already. Let's see that, not that. There's the spells. So he's going to be neutral good. Be a male. It's going to look like he's in his 40s. It's going to be a whole three foot. 10 or 3 foot 7 and probably weigh 88 pounds soaking wet and a small size so probably 78 pounds and 3 foot 2 little dude and got that let's go to the abilities tab so artificial special artificer specialist it's got the artillerist, which is the tool proficiency artillerist. You gain proficiency with wood carver's tools. If you already have it, you gain another type. So we need wood carver's tools. So that's why you want to look through these things. So we go to the items. Wood carver's tools. Put that in the inventory. 
And then you would just type in with the location. So this, these will go in the backpack. Now I want to go and um, add the skill. Call that maybe a dexterity based thing or maybe wisdom. We'll do it with wisdom. Let's see. Oops. There we go. He's got quite a few things that he can rely upon. And that's why I'm kind of going through these so that you add the right stuff and we're not missing items. Generally, where characters break is when they're not complete or something's missing or maybe, you know, they, they forgot to add something. So it's important to learn to do character creation regardless of how you build the character. As long as it's better off served as being correct so that the DM or you don't get confused and get mad and all that kind of stuff. And then the other thing is you know, learning how and when to apply this stuff. So it takes a little while to get, get used to that. But once you know it, it's just really simple. So let's go to the abilities again. So we did the cannon. The mer membership is, you know, sort of localized or, you know, something that you might come up in role playing. The infusions. So you, whenever you gain a level, you can replace one of the artificial, one of the artificial infusions. Fuse an item. So we already have the infusion. And then right tool for right job, already looked at that, and we did the artillerist thing. So pretty good. We got the gnome abilities already on here. So we're pretty good. That's a full build right there. And then we just need a picture now. So we have an artillerist. We have a rogue. We have a warrior. We have a warlock. And we have a cleric. So that's a pretty well-rounded group. So I, I don't think this group's going to need too many, too many more to choose from. We got a good array. I'm going to have six players, so I'm going to build the backstory for each one of these individuals. So there's a dwarf. Where's the other stuff here? There's a gnome wizard. There's a gnome. There's a gnome. Now be a bearded gnome. So there's another gnome. I think that this little goofy guy here, or this this guy here, I like this little goofy guy. So that's going to be our little um, little gnome dude. <laughs> Figgle Faring is his name. Figgle Faring is uh, a little squirmy little guy. Often moves around and stuff. It's hard to keep your eyes on him, but he's pretty quick. Got that ability, and he can get out of the way just as easy. So yeah, he's kind of a almost roguish, like a, kind of a cool, but he's got the uh, you know artillerist and stuff going on. So hopefully, he can make some bombs and stuff in the future. But for right now, it's just a starting off kind of deep gnome. Yep. All right, so that should be it for today. Um, hopefully, that helped some of you. I don't know if you what what how long you were watching or if. You, came in at the right time, but I went ahead and I finished a rogue before, and now I made this enchanter, kind of went back, or this enchanter, art artificer, and then I went back and built this character and kind of looked over the rest of the character. So this is for my one shot that's coming up in uh, at the end of the month for Founders Day on Friday the 30th. So if you haven't signed up for Founders Day weekend, there are quite a few classes or events open. Um, basically, we have mostly games. We have a few classes. 
We are having a symposium Saturday with uh, Doug Davison and also the Digital DM is going to come on a little later. And then on Sunday, we're going to have Satine Phoenix and Jamison Stone. And we're going to talk about their new Kickstarters. We're going to talk about Fantasy Grounds. We are going to talk about the hobby in itself. And then they're going to take a break for an hour or two. And then we're going to come back and play a actual live Fantasy Grounds game with their, uh, with their, I think, with their new content or with a module that's built already. So whatever it is, it's going to be fun. Um, they're going to be here for like six, oh, four to six hours. So that's that's pretty nice for them to donate their time with us. And also it helps them promote themselves too. So it's a really good uh, partnership. And if you guys are out there and you run games or you're a developer or something, come on into the Fantasy Grounds College. The link will be in the description after the video posts. And if you have any questions about this character build or you know if you have any criticism, whatever you want, um, get, get quite a few uh, messages out there. Oh, I don't like your videos are too long or your voice isn't right or you weren't holding your mouth just right. You know, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Just remember that we are a volunteer community. Uh, we by no means claim to be experts, although we are a community college type thing. Um, you know, we try to do our best. Uh, we don't go back normally and edit videos. So, no, there's not a lot of time for that. So if you're upset or disgruntled, you can find other places to watch. You can ask in the forums. There's different ways for you to get information. You don't have to just go by what I'm saying. This is just another way to convey and to show what Fantasy Grounds can do. Uh, I apologize for the unprofessionalism that we have, but we are a volunteer community. So if you hate our videos, that's fine. If you like them, that's even better. But uh, good and bad, it gives the channel more rating. And good or bad feedback is actually good overall. Um, but if I get too many bad feedbacks, obviously I have to do something about it. But, you know, the occasional guy trolling me or saying, hey, you suck or whatever, you know, whatever. That's, that's not a big deal. So I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good rest of the week. And I'll see you around and join up for Founders Day weekend on our website at fantasygroundscollege.net. And come to our Discord, which will be in the links. Join our Discord, join the website, and then book a class or a lesson. And the symposiums are free. You don't have to sign up for them to show up. Uh, most of them are on Saturday and Sunday in the afternoon or early evening. So come on to the college and check it out. Uh, or if you want to run a game or even sign up for an event, or even if you want to do a presentation on something that you really are passionate about that has to do with Fantasy Grounds, uh, we might be able to arrange that too. So take care, everybody. Have a good week, and I'll see you around. Bye-bye.